Hello, hello, I'm Janice and I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to our third vlog filmed in the comforts of home. Uh, it's been a pretty crazy few weeks here in Sydney and I just hope that you, your family and your friends are all doing well, you're staying safe and you're healthy. I know that we can't go outside and film at the moment, but that's not gonna stop me from making videos in the comforts of home. So I do wanna say, Thank you so much for always tuning in. Thank you so much for hanging out every single weekend. I really appreciate it. Uh, so now that I have more time at home, I've had the opportunity to spend some time doing something I never do before. And one thing that came to mind this week, I was like, what should I do for my video today? And I thought, you know what? Why not make an iconic Cantonese dish that I absolutely love, but I've absolutely no idea how to do. And in my tiny, tiny mind, I came up with the idea of making cha shu. This is Chinese barbecue pork. It is absolutely amazing. I love it. My mum loves to compare me with it. Uh, and what I mean by that is whenever I was a kid and I was really annoying, she would say, Sango cha se ho which directly translates as, I'd rather give birth to a cha shu than to you. And on that note, I thought, you know what, let's jump right in. I actually got this recipe from a YouTube video, which I'll link below. Uh, but this, this is what you're gonna need to make your very own homemade cha shu. So what you'll need is rice wine, light soy sauce, maltose, sugar and salt, oyster sauce, ground white pepper to taste, a few slices of ginger and garlic. And last but definitely not least, you need a piece of meat for your char siu, obviously, but it's super important that you get the right type of meat. In English, this is called a pork shoulder butt. In Cantonese, it's called a mui tao yo, or Mandarin, it's mei tao ro. I'll put it in my description as well so you can show them exactly what you need. Or, you know what? Okay, show them this segment. Hello, I'm a friend of cha siu. I'm going to make a cha siu. Hello, I'm a friend of mine. He wants to make a cha siu. Can you give him a little bit of a cha siu? Thank you. Because it's quite thick, I do know that I need to cut it in half. Okay, so there we have it. Yeah, two halves. Perfect. So, we are going to be making this sauce from scratch. I'm going to use a scale to make sure that I get the amounts to the T. Now, as you can see, this is like a weighted scale. And when my sister got this, I gave her so much crap for buying it because because I'm like, we don't need a fancy scale. I'm not a chef. But here we are. We're using it right now. So we need 15 grams of rice wine then we got to add 45 grams of soy sauce i've got my good old trusty 1.6 liters of soy sauce i use it every single day 20 grams of oyster sauce we need to add 45 grams of this is called maltose i was surprised that they were so easy to find in like the asian grocery stores i only went to two there was one that like completely ran out and the other one had had it in, in stock fully and they're actually not too expensive either i think this was like three four dollars we need 45 grams of I didn't realize how hard it would be to get this out. Jeez. Okay, and then we need 20 grams of sugar. Okay, I think we have pretty much everything. The next thing that we gotta do is to mix this all together. We're gonna chuck it in the microwave and then, um, and then continue to mix. Mm. Okay, this is the sauce. I changed bowls because I didn't want to put a metal bowl in the microwave. Okay, so what we need to do is cut up a couple slices of ginger and then just crush up a garlic. All right, last but definitely not least, we grab a massive Ziploc bag. We put our pork into this bag and then we pour our sauce into it. Then we put our ginger into the bag and also our garlic into the bag as well. Then we kind of like give it like a good mix around. I'm gonna try and squeeze out all the air. This is what this is what it looks like right now. There we have it. I'm gonna leave this in the fridge overnight and then tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be able to enjoy the fruits of our labor and see see how good this is. It is currently the next day and we have our char shoe 
marinated in the sauce that we made yesterday for nearly 24 hours. I've taken it out the fridge about 40 minutes ago just because um, it needs to go to room temperature so that when we put it in the oven, it cooks evenly. We need to make an additional like char siu sauce. It's using that maltose sugar and then some of this marinade as well and then combining it. Okay, uh, I think we're pretty much done with the sauce. I tasted this a little bit just then and it tasted so, so good. So we're about to start putting this into the oven. And the thing with this is it's gonna take about 25 to 30 minutes to cook, but then you gotta take it out of the oven every five minutes and then just brush it with this sauce. But before we actually do that, we need to line it up with like aluminum foil and then we're gonna place the pork on top and then I don't have a brush. I can't brush the sauce on, so I'm just gonna use a spoon and pat it on is what I'm gonna do. Okay, the first of our five minutes is now up. It is the first round of glazing for this char siu. Okay, we are done with the glazing, back in the oven for a second time for another five minutes. Okay, while we're waiting for our char siu to cook, currently it is Friday, the... See, I don't even remember dates anymore. Everything is like blurred together. The 25th of July, sorry, the 23rd of July, and let's go and watch the Olympics opening ceremony. It's amazing that the Olympics are like actually happening. What is your, what is your favorite sport to watch in the Olympics? I love watching gymnastics. I like watching swimming. What else do I like? I like watching fencing as well, because I used to fence when I was a kid. Okay, our char siu is finally done. There is a little bit of like burnt bits on top. It smells absolutely incredible. And there's like the bits of fat still dripping down. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut into the one that's slightly um, less thick just to make sure that it's fully cooked. Of course, if you have one of those things where you can stab into the meat and see how hot it is, those temperature sticks, great, but I don't have that, so. Okay, this char siu looks pretty similar to like what I typically get. All right, let's try my first piece of this homemade char siu. I can't believe I made this. Oh my God. And I can't even take credit for it. I literally followed step by step the recipe, which I'll link down below. Like I followed his YouTube video. This is incredible. This is amazing. Oh my gosh. The prep is super simple and you just need to be, be there physically to tend to your char siu like a newborn baby. Actually, I have no idea, but you know, you just have to tend to it every five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna plate up with like rice and veggies and then we're gonna properly sit down and enjoy this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot contain my excitement. I have made my very own, for the very first time, char siu rice. It's, there's something about having your veggies touch the char siu sauce that just makes it taste even better. This is so easy and so tasty. I urge you to try it. And if you do give it a go, let me know how yours turn out. Uh, I am going to fully focus on finishing my delicious char siu rice and I'll check back in with you very shortly. Okay, another day, exactly the same location. The reason we're back in the kitchen again is because I want to prep something that I absolutely love for dinner tonight. And it takes a little bit of time, hence why we're starting right now. It is something that I love to eat, especially in winter. So what we're gonna be making today is chicken congee. I'm gonna give you a small hack as well. Let me show you exactly what you need. This is what you're gonna need. Roll the montage. So what you need is chicken thigh fillets, rice, of course, salt, oil, chicken stock in liquid form, ginger, 
and spring onions. Okay, so the hack that I mentioned earlier, essentially what you need to do is after you wash the rice and you've drained the water and whatnot, you add salt and then you also add oil to it. And then what you do afterwards is you rub the salt and the oil and the rice together. And what happens is the congee that you make at the end, it's a lot more fluffy and it also cooks a lot faster. So we've already done that. And what you need to do afterwards is you just need to let it sit for about 30 to 45 minutes. After that's done, that's when you can start cooking. I'm going to unload my dishwasher. We are... Uh washed a lot of things yesterday after making that char siu and you know what for the longest time i never used dishwashers i don't know if it's because my mum never used dishwashers so i never used it either but i started using it earlier this year and it's an absolute game changer okay quick interruption in the vlog so i some char siu from a today because I wanted to give my sister to see if she can tell the difference. I'm going to get her to close her eyes because store-bought chashu, they add red coloring so you can pretty much tell just by looking at it which one's homemade and which one's store-bought. Okay, okay. So, wait. This is the first chashu that you are trying. Okay, put it in your mouth. Do you know where, where your mouth is? Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Which one do you think is which? Can I try it again? <laughs> and homemade. Why do you think A is homemade? Because no store would cut it that thin. You were wrong! Oh, really? Yeah. This is what I made. Can I try it again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right guys, it's been a few hours now and we are ready to make dinner. I let this sit for longer than 30 minutes. It's completely fine. But this is kind of what the rice looks like now. Um, and what we got to do now is we just got to rinse it again and then pour out the water and then we can get to cooking. Okay, so in terms of the chicken that you need for your congee, there's no like specific cut that you absolutely have to get. My mom and my grandma always says to use chicken that's still on the bone because it gives it a lot more flavor, but I always want things to be as simple and quick as possible. So I just put three chicken thighs in and also a few slices of ginger just to make sure that there's no gamey flavor to it. I also added some minced garlic and then yeah, we add some water, just enough water to cover the chicken pieces and then put it on high heat, let it boil. And then once it boils, put it back onto low medium heat and just let the heat do the job. I'll check back in with you when we, when we need to add our chicken stock, but for now, you know, we can just chill for a bit. The thing with congee is it's not overly hard to make, but it does take quite a bit of time and you gotta like, you gotta look after it and make sure, you know, it doesn't burn. You gotta stir it occasionally to make sure like the bottom doesn't stick. So congee is like a labor of love and care and attention. So if you watched my Newtown food vlog where I got this really cool bamboo plant as my house plant, you'll know that I have this humble dream of having my own veggie garden when I finally own my own place. But at the rate Sydney property prices are going at the moment, that dream is anything but humble. So now that we are stuck at home, I figured I get some practice in and um, I got this really cool herb kit where they provide everything for you. L let me show you what it's about. So like I was saying, this is a really cool herb kit that um, pretty much has everything that you would need, which is perfect because I don't know anything about growing anything. I even got gloves. I got these ladies easy grip gloves. I don't know if I need it, but I just... I just thought, you know what? I'll just buy that as well. Do I even need these gloves? I have no idea, but I just, I just wanted to wear it. Let's open our little kitchen herbs. So what I gotta do is I gotta add the soil pellets into a large bowl and add about 600 mils of lukewarm water. After 10 minutes, you will have enough soil to fill your windowsill tin. Loosen the soil with a table fork and put your new soil into the pot. Wow, it also comes with chalk so that you can write whatever you want on your little boards. <laughs> Puzzle. <laughs> oh, wait. Try. 
one try. <laughs> Okay, so our congee has been on low heat for about 40 minutes now and it's getting to quite a thick consistency and what we want to do now is the, the consistency is a little bit like porridge at the moment. So what we want to do is we want to add some of our chicken stock to sort of make it less thick but not too much that it gets too thin and then it doesn't have that fluffy texture. So usually I just eyeball it which is exactly what I'm going to do right now. If you don't have chicken stock, you can of course use water, but using chicken stock just makes it more flavorful. All right, we are in the home stretch now. We just got to chop up some spring onions. We're going to shred the chicken and then add the chicken back into the congee, add some salt, and we're pretty much done. <laughs> This congee is delicious. It's perfect. It's perfect, especially for a cold night. It just warms your stomach. It warms your heart. I'm so, so happy about this. I'm probably gonna add even more spring onions because I love that stuff. And I think that is pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I post new videos every week. Check them out if you have time. Let me know if you do end up trying the tasu and if you do end up trying this chicken congee. Um, let me know what you think and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Mummy, mummy, they gonna see, they gonna see sang go tasu or go sang 我想, 我想, 我想拍一個video 好嗎?